Hi there. So one of the questions I got asked when I first demonstrated Decal Champ was whether uh, the decals could be changed in real time um, over time. Um, and the good news is yes, they can. So why while decals are actually built specifically in the construction script, in the blueprint, uh, because it is a blueprint, uh, we can adjust them uh, over time because they're also using a dynamic instance. So I'm going to actually show you how to do that right here. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to use one of the, the templated uh, blood uh, splatter. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to dry it out and fade it over a short period of time just to demonstrate the effect. So to see that, first of all, what we're going to want to do is uh, create a child. And we will call this uh, blood fade. And then we will open up our new blueprint. And I'll just drag this in. So uh, I think I'm just going to put this on the screen here. So as you can see, the construction script uh, here isn't doing anything. The event graph here isn't doing anything. We haven't filled anything. This is just a child of our decal actor. So I'm just going to use it uh, from event uh, begin play. Um, again, I don't need to call the parent. The parent actually doesn't call anything. So first and foremost, uh, we were, we're going to want to fade uh, this over time. So I'm just going to do this, uh, you know, as soon as we start the game. So we will call um, a timeline uh, node, Sorry. and we'll call this fade. Okay. So in our timeline. We'll add a new track, we're going to add a float track, uh, we'll call this Fade Amount. And we're going to uh, have a key starting from 0 and 0, and we'll do another key, in fact let's make this 10, 10 seconds, we'll fade it a little slower. Um, we'll have another key, and we'll put this one at 10, and we'll make that 1. Together, so we can see what it looks like. Now, I'm actually going to want to fade this uh, on a slightly different curve than uh, just linear, and this is because the way that decal works. I've already tried this. What will happen is it fades a little too slowly in the beginning, and then sort of all happens sort of towards the second half of the curve. So we're just going to actually um, change this to speed it up. So if I make these auto, um, I'm just going to give it a curve that looks something like. Yeah, something like this is probably just slightly uh, better effect. Okay, and of course, as you can play around with all of this. Um, okay, just have a habit. I like to compile and save regularly, so I'm going to do that. Okay, so now we've got our timeline over 10 seconds. We're going to get, uh, it's going to fade from 0 to 1 on our curve. Uh, so we're going to want to use loops uh, to do that. I'm going to use a float loop. It's going to be our fade amount. So the first thing I'm going to want to actually uh, fade, I think, will just be the general opacity. Uh, so uh, to do that, we're going to get our material instance. And again, that is, uh, uh, I'm going to show you where this comes from in a minute. Uh, let's just get our material instance here. Here we are, get material instance. We're getting that from our parent. Uh, and I'm just going to drag that here. Now, let me just quickly show you uh, where I'm getting this from. So if we go into our main blueprint, um, the, I use, uh, I use uh, the electronic notes plugin, by the way, so my notes are a lot nicer than this, but I've uh, taken it off for this one because this is how you're going to see it, just for consistency. Um, so it looks a bit spaghetti. Uh, what's happening here is in the construction script, it's going to call our update decal, and this is actually going to run uh, a number of functions, obviously, to, uh, you know, to actually build a decal as you change it. Um, what you will see, and uh, if I'm just going to go into these create and set material, you're going to see this function. Uh, and what this function do you can see is actually creating a dynamic material instance and it's saving it uh, in this variable here. So this is a variable we're actually using now, um, the one we're getting from the parent because it's actually saved a dynamic material here so we can reference it. Um, so now we've got that uh, material, we're going to do a set scalar parameter value and we're going to have this is we're going to update this uh, with our lerp now we're going to want to lerp into the value now I know with uh, the blood decal the opacity is one when I start 
So I want to bring that down. I could bring it down to zero and have it completely disappear. I could leave some remnant of it, uh, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to have it, uh, as it lurks from zero to one, it's going to actually um, go take the float from one all the way down on the same curve to 0 0.05. And that value is then being fed into our material instance um, for our opacity. Now I haven't named it yet, I'm going to have to name it. So to understand uh, the, the actual proper naming convention, if you go back into the decal, uh, and again, if you're not sure where to go to go to construction script, you'll see there's the up, update uh, decal function. Now over here, this is actually updating all of the specific uh, functions that you see um, on the uh, on on the you know in, sorry in the details tab. So for example, you've got your general parameters. So if you, if you think of the primary texture, the albedo, the normal, the tint, these are all things you see. Um, what you want to do is make sure you look here because you will get the exact name as it is spelt. This is really important to get the name uh, correct. So here, opacity, I can find it in my general parameters and it's just called opacity. Um, if I'm unsure, I can copy paste, obviously. Um, so that's going to be my opacity and I'm going to drop that in right there. Okay, so after I've done that, I think I'm also going to update maybe the normal strength, uh, you know, the blood. Um, if we just have a quick look at the, we're just going to have a quick look at the blood. Um, we're going to go into, in fact, we can probably just drop this one straight on. Let me just quickly compile and save. Um, and we're, this is actually what we're going to use. Of course, we're going to be putting this on, not the uh, not the, um, the, the decal champ master anymore because we're this one is going to be the one that has the runtime commands in. Um, so let's put this down a bit. It's about right. Uh, we'll make this we'll make this a little bigger as always. Um, and then I'm going to uh, find my. Let's oh, change that here. Uh, right. Let me uh, just find my settings where's my mask format gone oh yeah one thing I noticed um, for some reason when I take a chart of it it does the order gets a little messed up so you can see I don't have my foot profiles at the top they're they're underneath the primary texture so everything gets uh, modeled up I don't know you can leave me a, uh, if you want to leave me something in comments show me how to get that back in the same same way so I'm not really sure exactly what it does that or how to fix that um, I'll look into that, but anyway, you can find it, it's all here. So I'm going to go to my blood and load my profile. There you go, it's a gorgeous looking blood splat just there. Uh, right, so, uh, yep, so here it is. So this is uh, the, the decal right now. In fact, sorry, I, I forgot to uncheck the sizing, so I'm just going to resize these again. Let's make it a little bigger so it's a little easier to see. I'm gonna leave it as is. My scene's kind of bright, but that's okay. I think that's good. All right, so we'll go back into um, our blood fade. And I think what else I want to do is I'm going to, you can see this blood is really chunky. And I think as it would dry, I would want the normal to maybe come down as well. So I'll go back into my blood fade. Um, I can see in my primary texture that my uh, normal, um, now there's actually, I need to be careful with this. This is my normal map. This is actually my texture map. This is not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is my normal strength, which is this one. So I can copy my normal strength because I'm gonna bring that down. And again, I can see if I look at my normal strength at the moment, I can see it's minus three. Um, the way I built this one was negatives go up and I think I just built the normal wrong, but that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna, copy paste or sorry duplicate my loop here um, so we know this one is going to start at minus three um, I could obviously fetch the current uh, what it's currently at and you can do it that way but it's actually a little easier and a little quicker to do it this way um, so minus three and I want that to go to zero I want the normal to completely disappear uh, in this example uh, so I'm going to take another uh, parameter value uh, and again I'm sorry if copy paste where's it gone strength there we go this is one we want so we're going to just copy that and put that in just here okay now I'm going to want my fade amount 
also in my alpha. So it's gonna go from minus three to zero over that 10 second curve. And that's going to then feed in to my normal strength. Now obviously I do need to connect up my material instance so it knows what to change. And I'm going to drag that here. Um, and let's do one more, I think. Uh, you know, I think also as it dries, it's not gonna be as wet and shiny looking. Um, so we're gonna do a roughness as well. And these are, these are all scalar parameters, so I can just really copy both of these, uh, connect them up, and then we'll just make the relevant changes. So I'm dragging my fade amount. So if we have a look at um, the roughness. Again, we'll see what we have it as currently. Uh, where's it gone? Let's have a look. Roughness. So yeah, my roughness here is 0.1, which is obviously gives that nice wet look. So when we go to one, it's actually, we'll see it here, when we go to one, it's going to dry up like that. Okay, so that's what we're going to do, that's the effect we're going to go for. And of course, you could make all kinds of changes. You could change the color, have it go more brown as it dries. I'm not going to go too far. I'm just going to, I think I'm going to stop with this. Um, so we'll go back, we'll look for our roughness. Uh, so again, here it's called roughness strength. So that's important. It is going to match on the name. Um, we'll drop that in here. Okay, we do need to connect our material instance. So we said it's at 0.1, and we're gonna to wanna to take that all the way up to one. So uh, that should be good. We've got our material instance connected up. We've got our correct name and in for the three values we'd like to change. Uh, the When we begin the level, the fade will start. This is a, a 10 second kind of fade, so it's going to change those values over a period of 10 seconds. Uh, but this should actually work, so I'm going to compile and save. And the only way we'll know is we will just drop right into the game and try it out. So press play. And there you go. You can see over time, and because the opacity changed as well, you can see it dried up and then it's left a small remnant of the blood. So that's a very basic example, but uh, the, that's just an example of how you can actually create uh, a, a decal that uh, you know changes uh, its parameters in real time at runtime. Um, so yeah, there we go. Thank you so much for watching.